لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتنقل ولا فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلقف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا إنهم إن يوهروا عليكم يرجموكم أو يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولا تفلحوا إذا أبدا وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم فقالوا ابنوا عليهم بنيانا ربهم أعلم بهم قال الذين غلبوا على أمرهم لنتخذن عليهم مسجدا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم منهم أحدا ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا ولبثوا في كهفهم ثلاثمائة سنين وازدادوا تسعا قل الله أعلم بما لبثوا له غيب السماوات والأرض 
بصير به وأسمع ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب رب بك لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفرنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا وقل الحق من ربكم فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر إنا أعتدنا للظالمين نارا أحاط بهم سرادقها وإن يستغيثوا يغاثوا بماء كالمهل يشوي الهجوه بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إنا لا نضيع أجر من أحسن عملا أولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتهم الأنهار تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون من ذهب ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس وإستبرق مت سندس وإستبرق متكئين فيها على الأرائك نعم الثواب وحسنت مرتفقا صدق الله العظيم
My beloved Jamaatul Muslimin, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it gives me great pleasure to present you our speaker for today, final year alim student at IPSA, none other than Sheikh Nadir Malik, to speak to us today on the state of the Ummah. Without further ado, Sheikh Nadir Malik, Falitafuddal Mashkura. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره والمقدار العظيم رب شرح لصدري ويسر لعمري وهل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Shukran to Sheikh Alexander for that introduction that I do not feel I deserve. But uh, my name is Nadir Malik, and uh, inshallah the, the topic that I will be discussing is, as Sheikh has said, is the state of the Ummah as we find it today, inshallah. Allah Ta'ala says to us in the Quran, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَيُّ تَرَكُوا أَيْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Allah Ta'ala asks us, do men think that they will be left alone on saying, we believe, and that they will not be tested. The reality of this particular ayah is that every one of us will be tested. And these tests will come in different ways, in different forms. Sometimes we will be tested as individuals, and sometimes we will be tested as an ummah in our entirety. As Muslims, in this day and age, we are faced with a great challenge in terms of in particular politics, but generally the philosophy of life. And specifically in terms of belief and of culture. Initially, when Islam came, if we look into the history of it, we find that throughout the world, different communities had developed their own spiritual ideologies. But what was common was that the main idea of the majority of these ideologies was the idea of an afterlife, right? The next world. Now, some, in fact, in fact, most of these ideologies considered this world to be an illusion. And some even considered it to be evil. And what we find mainly is that they believed that this world had to be renounced in order for us to receive salvation in the next world. Islam, however, came with a positive outlook in this regard. And as Muslims, we believe that Allah Ta'ala is absolute good and that whatever comes from Allah, which obviously is everything that we know, must be good. And it is the way that we use it that makes it evil. So everything in this world has a value. We can put a, press, a, 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 a price tag on anything based on various elements such as, for example, materials or craftsmanship. But what we end up with is what we can term a dunya value. So even something as simple as a tasbi, it has a dunya value. But whether we hang it in our cars by the mirrors as ornaments, or if we use it as a tool and as a reminder to remember Allah, that will increase or decrease what we can term the akhirah value. If we take this masjid, for example, at the end of the day, if we want to be literal, this masjid is brick and mortar. It, it, it's built with the use of various materials, uh, craftsmanship, it has a dunya value. But what happens inside this masjid, the, the way that the masjid is used, that is what will increase or decrease its akhirah value. In this way, Islam changed the outlook of humanity and it brought about a new system of belief with a unique character. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ even says to us in a hadith, Bada al Islam Gariba, he says that Islam began as something unique, something strange, something different. So while Islam distinguishes between the dunya and the akhirah, and in fact, if we just take the, that term, that phrase, hayatu dunya, the, the, the worldly life, it literally means the lower life. But it is where we earn our place in the higher life, the akhirah, hayat, the, 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 in, in, in the akhirah. So while the akhirah is our end goal and our objective in our deen, the dunya is the subject matter. So we need to spiritualize that hayat dunya 
in order to achieve that objective in the Akhirah. This idea was revolutionary even for the monotheists at the time. Islam combined this world with the next. And that is why, I mean, we even, Allah Ta'ala gives us in Surah Baqarah, He gives us the, the, the dua that all of us recite at least once a day. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina adab al nar. Where we say, Our Lord, give us the good in this world and the good in the year after and defend us from the torment of the fire. Now, this philosophy of life reforms this world and it establishes Allah Ta'ala's sovereignty in hayat al dunya and it eradicates the evil. The philosophy that rather than renouncing this world, we should rather strive to conquer this world as servants of Allah by establishing good. Islam is therefore not just a religion or a belief system or an ideology. Islam is a framework of clear-cut directions forming a perfect and comprehensive way of life. And that is why when the Muslims were confronted by the world superpowers at, at the time, that was the, the, mainly the Roman and the Persian empires, the Muslims destroyed them, not physically, but politically and ideologically. And Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah, in Surah Tawbah, Allah Ta'ala says, It is He who hath sent His Messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to proclaim it over all other religions, even though the pagans may, dis- may detest it. And in Surah Al Imran, Allah Ta'ala makes our mission clear. Allah Ta'ala says to us, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, ta'muruna bil ma'aruf, wa tanhawna anil munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. Allah Ta'ala says that, you are the best of people evolved for mankind, enjoying what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. Now, this obviously is not our default position. Where Allah Ta'ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin, it doesn't mean that that is our default position. In this particular ayah, there are three conditions that have to be met in order to become the best of people. And those who understood this meaning and this message of Islam, they went out and they challenged the rest of the world by bringing about a comprehensive intellectual revolution. And that small group of Muslims, with the guidance of Allah and with the inspiration of the Nabi wasallam, they then took that challenge to the rest of the world. And the Muslims then became pioneers on all fronts. And they became teachers in all branches of knowledge. And as a result of their education, built on that solid Islamic foundation, they brought the world the highest moral standards and spiritual values. So much so that many countries adopted not only the religion, but the culture in its entirety. We find, for example, in Northern Africa, Egypt, for example, they had their own society, they had their own culture, they had their own language even, but they adopted Islam, they they fell so in love with the people that they adopted not just the religion, they adopted the culture and even the language. We also find that the, well, the, the beauty and the appeal of these people, of these messengers of peace, was the education and the advancements that they had made in all fields of knowledge. We find even in places like in Spain, Andalus, the Muslims had penetrated the society to the point that the culture and the civilization that they had built literally became the envy of the rest of Europe. While Europe was in what is known as medieval barbarism, Muslims in Spain had built universities, they had built hospitals, they had built observatories, various educational institutions, And the difference that we find between the societies is that while Islam not only embraced, but Islam actually encouraged these advancements, the church fought against this enlightenment. And as a result, Europeans had to study under the Muslims. The church, I mean, it's it's a historical fact, the church hated the Muslims because of this. Because until then, religion was built on the conflict between faith and reason. The philosophy of religion was based purely on faith. So when scientific knowledge started to develop and evolve in terms of its philosophy, it was considered to be against the church. And this resulted in the emergence of an, and, and the evolution of a philosophy of life that is based on materialism and atheism. 
And that is, unfortunately, what we are left with today. Modern civilization has adopted a philosophy of belief that is athe atheistic and materialistic. They have adopted a philosophy of morality that is sensualistic and hedonistic. And they have adopted an economic philosophy that is exploitative and a political philosophy that is opportunistic. And this is the challenge that we are faced with. We live in a world where if you believe in an almighty God, for example, you are considered to be counter-revolutionary and regressive or traditionalistic. If you don't, you are thought to be progressive and modern. If you believe in things like truth, goodness, moral integrity, chastity, you are outdated. In order to be modern and to keep up with the times, you need to let go of these beliefs. If you believe in moral foundations in business, for example, you are seen as weak. If you want to be seen as prosperous, you need to let go of all ethical principles. Now, the early Muslims understood that Islam teaches the principles of greatness in this world through virtue. And Allah Ta'ala says to us in Surah Al-Ahzab, That Allah says to us, Keep your powers at the highest pitch against them. Now the early Muslims understood this, and that is why they were victorious. However, somewhere along the line, we seem to have lost touch with this foundational principle in Islam. We became complacent, and as a result, our enemies overpowered us both on the literal and the proverbial battlefields. And that power, that, that foundational principle that the early Muslims understood was the power of education and not just sacred knowledge. Unfortunately, today, and I was just having a conversation with, 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 with our sheikh, today we seem to separate what we refer to as Islamic and secular knowledge. There is no difference. There is no such thing as Islamic and secular knowledge because if you want to put it into a question, what are you going to study? or What are you going to learn that does not come from Allah? So rather, if we can put it into, if you can rename these categories and say that we, would, we, we, we can separate it into sacred knowledge and worldly knowledge. We find that Muslims were leaders in all fields of science, technology, of medicine, geography, astronomy, mathematics, you name it. If you term that as the worldly knowledge, Muslims were at the forefront of that education. And like we said in the dua, in the ayah from Surah Baqarah, where Allah Ta'ala says, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa qina adab al nar. Then we find that Islam teaches us to seek out and to obtain the good of this world and of the next. But when we were overpowered, we were enslaved to that atheistic and materialistic system. And we have consequently lost that balance that was once our pride. This modern system of civilization is alluring us, especially our youth, to imitate only the glamour. Islam has also seen many reformers who have tried to meet this challenge and to cure this disease that has inflicted us. But unfortunately today we find that the conditions are not the same. Our ummah is no longer producing the thinkers like Imam al-Ghazali, Imam Shafi, Imam al-Razi, people like al-Hawarith radiallahu ta'ala anhum. The, and obviously there they, they were, they were many, others, many, many others, but unfortunately we are producing very ordinary people. And at this point I'd like to point out that my tongue is the closest to my own heart. I myself lack the understanding. But we find that that healthy climate where intellect and spirituality were in harmony no longer exists. And neither do the conditions in which a healthy moral pattern of life can really be cult, uh, cultivated and nurtured. This can, however, not be our end. Even if one spark remains, it can be nurtured and it can become the biggest fire with which to burn the evil out of us. This spark will always be there. It is the same spark that the Prophet ﷺ placed in the hearts of his companions. The spark of genuine Iman in Allah. We need to realize and we need to understand that Iman is not a ritual or a formal exercise, but it is real. It is something that is alive and it must be cultivated. Iman is the force that made our forefathers great. It is through that spark of Iman that good was established and evil was eradicated for the betterment of humanity at large. And we need to return to it and we, we need to reestablish that spiritual and moral fiber. 
And it is possible. Allah Ta'ala says to us in the Quran, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ Allah Ta'ala says, when comes the help of Allah in victory, and thou dost see people enter Allah's religion in crowds. Now we know through tafsir that this ayah was revealed, referring to the passing of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from this world to the next. Now if it is still given in the future tense, which means that that victory can and must come again. That victory lies in the hands of our youth. Our youth are the backbone of our society. In fact, they are the backbone of every community and our future rests with them. All values and ideals are in need of certain institutions as well to facilitate the, the preservation and especially Islam because Islam's philosophy is perfect or at least it, it is that comprehensive. But unfortunately, in many cases, we find that institutions have become important, but the value system has been forgotten. And when the values and the spirit are forgotten, the community becomes stagnant. And anything that is stagnant will eventually deteriorate. If we think about, for example, a body of water that has been standing still and motionless for a long time. Now, Islam has started as a complete, progressive, and dynamic movement for the service of mankind. And we've quoted the, uh, the, 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 the ayah earlier where Allah Ta'ala says to us, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhauna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. That Allah Ta'ala says that you are the best of people evolved from mankind, enjoying what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. And this cannot be done in the name of race or nationality or even a specific community. It should also not be done on the basis of materialistic distinctions that divide us. It must be done for the sake of Allah. Because before Allah, we are all equal. And with that concept of universality, our forefathers emerged. Not to dominate or to persecute, but to serve. And that is why the greatest phenomenon recorded in history is the rise of Islam. Never before, or never has there been an emergence of a religion or a philosophy of life like that of Islam. And we find that the great the famous Scottish philosopher Thomas Carlyle once said that it appears as if the sands of Arabia were transformed into an explosive powder and there was a blast and it illumined the entire horizon of, human, of, of, of mankind, dispelling darkness and spreading light. And we find that this illumination was not done by armed force, but rather by the power of spirit and the force of Islam's value system that brought about the success of the early Muslims. They carried the banner of Islam as messengers of peace and progress, bringing mercy for people who were lost and downtrodden. And that is why they were embraced with open arms as saviors and not feared as conquerors. If you look at the European nations, for, for, for example, the ideologies were, were, were spread through violence. When they colonized other communities and it was, it, it was done through violence, and bloodshed. If you look at South Africa, for example, not only did they colonize this beautiful country, but they also brought political prisoners here from other regions that they had colonized, also through violence. They were feared as conquerors. Islam was spread peacefully through spiritual and educational advancements. So whose examples do we want to follow? Do we want to follow the examples of those oppressors or that of those messengers of peace and progress. It, and it can happen again. The answer is simple, but its implementation will take hard work and commitment, especially from our youth. Because the answer to this challenge that we face, that is that blast that Thomas Carlyle was referring to. And that blast is what we spoke about earlier. That blast is education. Education is what brought about the success of our forefathers. And it is only through education the education of our youth, that we will secure the future success of this ummah. And not only Islamic or sacred education, we need to return to being leaders in all fields because Islam encompasses every aspect of life and all fields of education. So to our youth, our leaders of tomorrow, this ummah needs you to do your best. This ummah needs you to be successful in your chosen field so that you can save us 
from that materialistic and atheistic system that has enslaved us. For us to achieve that, we need leaders in worldly knowledge just as much as we need scholars of sacred knowledge and Islamic sciences. It is the combination of the two that will once again make us victorious, but it needs to be balanced. We cannot put so much effort into our education that we neglect our deen. So if you are going to be a teacher, be the best teacher of our time. If you are going to be a doctor, a lawyer, a software developer, a mechanic, a plumber, you name it, be the best at it that you can be, but be Muslim first. And remember Allah Ta'ala saying to us, And hold fast unto the rope of Allah and be not divided amongst yourselves. One of my teachers once said to us that violence is the language of the inarticulate. And as we can see in the world around us, violence only brings about more bloodshed. And the only way to put an end to it is through education. And that is why Islam places so much importance on it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to us, to, to us in a hadith, طلب, uh, ilm ala kulli muslim, that the seeking of knowledge is obligatory on every Muslim. And we should use that knowledge to serve humanity. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also says to us in another hadith, Sayyidul Qawm Khadimuhum, that the best of people are those who are in the service of humanity. Inshallah, may Allah Ta'ala guide and protect you, our youth. May Allah Ta'ala grant you ease and completion for your efforts. And may you go down in history as the generation that sparked the revival of the Islamic philosophy of life. And may Allah Ta'ala grant for all of us that we do not leave this gathering except that he has forgiven us. Amen. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Takbir. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Jazakallah khair to our young scholar, Sheikh Nadir Malik, final year student at Ibsa. May Almighty Allah grant you all the success, dunya and akhirah, and may Allah make you successful in your studies. Amin. And may you become one of the dynamic leaders of tomorrow that the community really needs, inshallah. Amin. Just a few announcements. <clears throat> We have been asked to make du'a for Mr. Sheikh Ali Dao Dalvi, it was his janaza, and also for Mr. Nazir Ahmed Pangakar of Zimbabwe, and also the Muhammad family request du'a for their sister Khadija Dao who passed away last Friday. For all of them and all deceased, wherever they are buried, may Allah put nur in their kuburs, and may Allah grant all our deceased Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. Ya Rabbal Alameen. We are also making du'a for Mrs. Khairun Nisa Bray, the wife of our beloved Dr. Usman Bray. Alhamdulillah, there's some improvement in her therapy and her health, and we pray that Allah grant her full shifa. Amin, ya Rabbal Alameen. And we also make du'a for my sister Fatima uh, Alexander, who was in hospital and had operation. May Allah grant her and all sick people at home and in hospital, grant them full shifa. Amin, ya Rabbal Alameen. And I just want to let you know that the uh, enrollment is still open for our Al-Quds College in the morning that we run for ladies, as well as our afternoon madrasa, whoever, whoever is interested in enrolling, them or their children, they are most welcome. You can speak to Mr. Abdul Hamid Furfrey or any of our committee members, inshallah. This coming Wednesday on the 13th of November, the Janjira Habsani Society will be hosting the annual Na'at program and they have the guest reciter Hafiz Sijan Qadri and that program will take place this coming Wednesday, Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. at the Rosha Manzil. Inshallah, everyone is welcome. <clears throat> the ANC local branch will be hosting a memorial in tribute to stalwarts in our community, including the late Dr. Abdul Wahab Barde, Rahmatullah Alay, and the guest speaker will be Mr. Abdul Minti, the former South African, South African ambassador to Geneva, and that program will be on Tuesday, the 12th of November, also at the Rosha Manzil at 8 p.m., inshallah, and the Thursday on the 21st of November, the masjid will also have 
a special dhikr in memory of the late Dr. Abdul Wahab Barde, who was one of the founder members and trustees of this Masjid Al Quds. May Allah grant him and all deceased Jannatul Firdaus. Amen. And once again, I want to make a special appeal to those people who buy the coupons to get the best acne in the country after Jumu'ah. And I did make mention of it last week, but still some people came late. And unfortunately, we couldn't give them the acne that they order. So even if you have a coupon, try to get early to get your necessary acne that you have ordered, that we can see to the coupon people first, and then the people with their cash, inshallah. Don't want to in disappoint anyone. Then alhamdulillah, this, I'm really inviting you to attend a special class. This Tuesday coming, after Maghrib immediately, we're having Brother Ashraf Schneider, who was giving the Juma khutbah here about three or four weeks ago. And in fact, when he made the khutbah, there's about approximately between 13 million viewers on internet who viewed his lecture and they liked it. It's a very passionate young man who embraced Islam, who was a former leader in the church, and now is a passionate da'i for Islam. He is running a four-week course here every Tuesday. He gave a beautiful introduction on Tuesday, and I wish that our auditorium were actually full to capacity because you must come and listen to him and benefit from him. And he is lecturing on the methodology of da'wah, how to speak to other Muslims about our beautiful deen of Islam. At least if we can, when we leave this world, even if one person got hidayah through our efforts, that might just be our ticket into Jannah and get the satisfaction and the rida of Allah. So especially our youth, young men and young women especially, please, Tuesday evening, immediately after Maghrib, upstairs in the auditorium, Methodology of Dawah by Brother Ashraf Schneider, how to do Dawah and how to convey the message, inshallah. And the class is absolutely free of charge. I'm also starting my Hajj class, Hajj and Umrah class, Wednesday nights after Maghrib, you're in the masjid, everyone is welcome. The class is also absolutely free of charge. And Sheikh Ismail, my colleague, is having a beautiful Monday night class after Maghrib on the seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very dynamic indeed. Please, the classes are all free. It is there for you to come and benefit, inshallah. As you know, Saturday night, the majority of Muslims throughout the world will be celebrating and commemorating one of the holiest nights, and that is the night of the commemoration of the birth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I invite all of you to our program Saturday night, immediately after Maghrib to Ishai. We will start with a kira, short kira. We'll have a naat program. And our key speaker for Saturday night will be my colleague, co-imam, Sheikh Ismail Abrams, who cannot be here today. He is making Juma at Medina Institute in town, but he will be the speaker Saturday night for our Mawlud, inshallah. Everyone is welcome. And of course, Sheikh Ismail will also conduct the Juma ah next Friday, inshallah ta'ala. So without further ado, there's one, one last announcement. And I want you to listen carefully. I'm making this announcement with the greatest of respect. I don't like to attack people. It's not my nature. But please take this in a good spirit. As you can see, every Friday, for the three parking spots in front, we always have the cones there in front to show that that is the parking, especially if we have guest lecturers, imams, and the one parking is reserved for the van who brings the food every Friday. Now, I don't know who this person is, but it's not only for this person, but for every other person. It's a driver of a Isuzu Bucky, CY284692. Please, 
Don't be rebellious and stubborn and show that you will just remove that cones. Don't disrespect protocol. We are doing for a purpose. Wallahi, I personally don't mind to park anywhere, even if I must park on the field. Our committee members are all parking on the field because we want to reserve more places for people to park properly here. So please, if you see that cones at the parking, respect the reservation of that parking place, inshallah. I'm asking you with the greatest of respect. Shukran. Jazakallah khair and bait ramakasi. Can I ask everyone to kindly stand and step forward, fill up all the safs. And wherever you see a saf in front of your space, in front of you, that space is rightfully yours. Shukran. And I think what I need to say now is also very, very important. It depends on the acceptance of our Jumu'ah. The great Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahmatullahi said that if the Imam is on the mimbar and people are talking while disrespecting the khutbah, you stand a chance of making your Jumu'ah batil. We've had quite a few complaints of people who say that people continue to talk even though the imam is on the mimbar, please respect that moment, especially the moment the imam gets on the mimbar, even if someone next to you talk to you, ignore him or ignore her and sit with full respect and listen that our Jummah must not become batil. Amen. Shukran. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhad an la. أشهد أن لا إله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة
حي على الفناء حي على الفناء الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم إذا الإسلام والمسلمين وعدل شرك والمشركين رب اختمنا بخير برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله 
Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya ala al-salaam Hayya ala al-salaam Hayya ala al-falaah Hayya ala Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستغفر ونستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح أمة فجزاه الله عنا خير ما جزاء نبيا من أمته صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فقد قال الله كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله ولكن لكي نكون خير أمة يجب أن نطاوع هذه الأوامر وعلينا أن نثبت أنفسنا في خدمة الإنسانية فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد القوم خادمهم أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم يجب أن نتعلم الدروس من تأريخنا كي نخرج من الخسارة وبالله التوفيق فقال الله واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا بارك الله, بارك الله في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزيد عليم وتفضل وبارك بجلالك وكمالك على زين بارك وأشرف يبارك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وسلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى أن كل سحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الحبيب مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم اتقوا الله حيثما كنت أيها الناس فإن أفضل حديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ورضى الله عن الخلفاء الراشدين سيدنا أبي بكر وسيدنا عمر وسيدنا عثمان وسيدنا علي رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن صحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين 
اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم انا نسالك من كل خير ما سالك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك الصالحون ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك الصالحون انت المستعان وليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم عباد الله ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروا يزدكم ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيموا الصلاه Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu anna muhammadan rasulullah Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah Qad qamati al-salat, qad qamati al-salat Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sallahu al-saqiyam alhamdulillah Allah Allahu Akbar بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يوقد من شجرة مباركة من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Khairil maghdubi alayhim Waladhalin Qad aflah man tazakka wa dhakara asma rabbihi fasalla bal tu'dhirun alhayata ad-dunya wal akhiratu khairun wa abqa inna hadha lafi as-suhuf al-ula suhuf ibrahim wa musa Allahu Akbar Sami'allahu liman hamidah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Allahu Akbar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah al-azimatu wa abrahim al-lazhi la ilaha illa wa al-hayyul qayyum wa natubu ilayk wa nasaluka tawbatan wa afiratan innahu huwa tawabu rahim أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجنان والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإنك المصير ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا وفن لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ودخلنا الجنة مع نبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معتي لما منعت ولا راد لما قضيت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد اللهم إنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم لا تحرمنا أجورهم ولا تفتمنا بعدهم وفر لنا وارحمنا معهم اللهم اغفر لهم وارحم مسكن في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحم وادخل في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحم وروح في الجنة بخير يا أيتها النفس المطمئنة رجعي إلى ربك راضية مرضية 
فادخلي في عبادي ودخلي جنتي اللهم اشفي مرضانا اللهم اشفي مرضانا اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين قال الله تعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين